All right, guys, we're back for round nine's review of the uh, 2022 Supercoach season. Uh, not a good week by any means, uh, actually kind of bad. Thought it was be going to be a little bit worse than it was, but um, yeah, not good. Uh, just a couple of things that, like it was last minute changes that I made that just so negative. Sunday absolutely killed the team. Uh, 2194, again, not great. Did go up in rank, but barely anything. But I guess up's up, so it is what it is. Um, man, uh, if I could go back, time travel, I'd uh, just not make the trades I did this week. And it's the fact that I had the, like, in hindsight, correct trades, and I reversed them, like, five minutes before uh, the Richmond game. Uh, let's just do this um yeah i don't think i had anything it's just a uh, mess around with stuff um so like number one was like rioli on field that was this was meant to be clark but like last second i got cold feet and changed it and then carol was meant to be hamilton so it is what it is um sicily 141 looks like the best defender this year which is good for the price i got him in to have him at d1 is like uh godsend or something like that right um he was was back this week he looked good short a uh, little bit disappointing uh, i actually thought he was going to be like a sneaky vice captain option this week um ended up just going with the neil oliver even though i knew Petraka was going to do better i just went with the safe one um crisp 100 he, i think he looked good for the first half uh, i only watched the first half um, and then just fell off, which I think that's a couple of weeks in a row he's done that. So hopefully he doesn't keep that up. Hopefully one of these games he puts it all together. This week it's Frio, so it's probably in for a pretty bad score, to be honest. One and wait break even. He could actually miss that. Hewitt, like I said, he was back. He looked fine. Um, he probably took last week off as more rest instead of, like, hurt, injured, uh, which is... Obviously, that's great for, like, super coach players because he had bench cover and now he's, like, fit firing again. So, it's good to hear. Uh, Ridley, I only watched the first quarter because that game was a blowout. I just didn't feel like watching it. And the commentary... It's reached that point in the season where the commentary just... I can't... I have to mute the game because I can't listen to commentary. Um, but, yeah, he looked good. Uh, still looking at trading him because i don't think this holds up he's only at 94 average when there's like defenders averaging 105 plus yeah there's a lot of them so he's still probably a trade out post buy which is 12 yeah so i might trade him um hmm i'm, I'm thinking somewhere in the buys he's getting traded if not he's just gonna have to work as a weak d6 because uh, I do want, I want Dawson, and I want, I want Dale. I think Dale's like a pod that not many people are looking at, and uh, his scoring's been really consistent this year, and he, his role is just super consistent. Uh, Dacos held him. Um, actually, I thought he hit his break even. I, I could have sworn his break even was sixty five, something like that. Um, does it show? I think it does on here. Um, 68 and uh, scored 69 and went down. It's interesting. Yeah, okay, it's interesting. Um, I think if you're in a good position right now, you mm, it's tough because his buy is, I think, the middle one, isn't it? No, he's the last one. Yeah. He's actually good to hold through the buys. Uh, round 14, I think the only defenders was like Zorko. Uh, what is it? Frio. Frio don't really have anyone. Maybe uh, Luke Ryan. It's Luke Ryan? Yeah, Liam Ryan's the West Coast one. Uh, maybe he picks it up and he becomes like a pseudo option, but I don't think so. So, yeah, uh, this buy kind of sucks honestly for teams that you can pick from hopefully you can hold him i might have to trade him maybe next week so there is a forward i really want to bring in next week who's like top priority 
Uh, Dacos, um, Gibkus didn't play, uh, just didn't, I think he was in health and safety, so he should just come back this week. It's possible that they make him do a week in the, uh, VFL, but, I mean, this week works as a rest, which he was kind of needing, so, yeah, maybe he just slides back in with his break even. 48, he should hit it. Um, I think he's like a 50 average, uh, 66 isn't really that accurate. Uh, De Koning 69, I think he's in line for rest sooner or later. Against Port this week, don't expect a great score. He's another one, um, the longer he's, you can hold him, the better. Because I think he's actually just going to keep going up. Like Gibkus, I think his floor is like 45, and his average is going to be like 50. Um, so, that you know, there's not heaps of wriggle... wriggle Wiggle room there, but, uh, you know, the longer you can hold him, the better. The midfield was pretty good. Like, you know, the Crips fell off in the second half. Oliver, I knew not to captain him, but I ended up doing it. Uh, Neil was a little disappointing. Uh, he played West Coast. Everyone was like, oh, here comes the West Coast game. You know, he's going to go crazy. But, um, nah, I, I did think that there was a bit too much hype being put around that. It's... It's just not... Oh, no, it was the week before. Adelaide this week, I'm mixing up Oliver because everyone thought Oliver was going to go huge, and, of course, he didn't. Um, Yeah, I think his averages versus Adelaide are pretty good. I think he has, like, a 160 in the system against them. Um, So people were like, yeah, he should put up a 130, something like that. Just didn't happen, so... It's not the worst ever. Uh, 115... Um, the correct option was for me to take it um yeah it is what it is oliver like i said just a little disappointing um he when versing a bad team like i think don't they have north soon or is it this week yeah uh against bad teams you want to go petrarca uh the correct way to stop melbourne i mean they're i think they're undefeated still so there is no like way to stop them but like the correct play is to tag petrarca uh, it's a lot harder and you have to kind of just have the personnel to do it. You can't just do it with anyone. Um, but against bad teams, Petrarca just dominates because they can't tag him. The, like, the correct way is tag him, let Oliver get his touches, and then stop what Oliver can do with it. Uh, just, you know, take away his lanes to handball and his lanes down the field and stuff like that. That's the correct way to stop them, but it is what it is. I guess maybe also um, try to remove Gorn, but it is what it is. Uh, Took had a good game. Uh, it actually looked like he was going to go huge. It looked like, uh, you know, maybe like a 160 or something like that. It did calm down, uh, which, you know, uh, for people that brought him in cheap, I think he did drop under 600. My memory is not too good of that, so I just didn't really pay attention. Um, let's see, did he drop? Yeah, he did drop under 600. He actually dropped fairly under 578. If you brought him in for that, that's a bargain. Um the only issue is now, like, if you brought him in, you probably had, like, steel or something in your team to make the money. So, yeah. Uh, McRae, um, big score last week. Perfectly fine score this week. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting after, like, everyone comes back. Like, there's Lockie Hunter out of the team. Um, Bont just came back in this week. He took his week rest. Maybe they're going to rest all their mids, like, rotate them. Uh, it's Gold Coast this week. They could rest someone. Like, there's no reason to go full strength versus Gold Coast. But I guess the dogs do kind of need a couple of wins, don't they? So, and I touched on McRae. Um, McRae, uh, Crips. Good first half, just fell off the second half. Nothing really, like, crazy happened. He didn't get hurt or anything. Just wasn't as impactful in the second half. Um, GWS did kind of, like, step up a bit. Um, I guess they just wanted to win for Leon's last game, which, but I should have opened the video with it. Hooray, Leon is gone. GWS players, as far as, like, foreseeable, they're pickable again. Um, wait and see this week. Obviously, don't jump on any this week. Uh, but, yeah, hallelujah, he's finally gone. I think he was the worst coach in... The, actually, no, the Stewie-Doo is the worst one. But, um, yeah, he was he was up there. And he's one of the worst managers of people of ever seen he's, he's actually like a worse manager than um 
Dewey's, but uh, he's yeah probably second worst actual coach. Uh, Petrarca was good. Should have vice cap. Uh, should have captained him. I knew this was going to happen. He's the exact like type of player against a bad team. He just dominates. And then these two. Oh my god, Carroll was playing half forward, um, and Rioli just didn't do anything. Which is, you know, he's a small forward, plays for like the best, nah, not best, I'd say like the fourth best team in the comp. Uh, so, and they're, they're always looking for Lynch, so they're not, <clears throat> I don't think any team actually targets small forwards on their team. Yeah, this is rough, um, especially since bef- like five minutes before the Richmond game started, I had Clark and Hamilton there. Uh, that sucks. Um, and he, I really shouldn't have fielded him. There was no reason to field him at all. I should have just taken McComb, huh? Ah, it is what it is. Can't if if that. What did Hamilton end up scoring? It, I don't think it was like crazy, but I mean anything is better than a seven. I think it was like sixty, sixty, fifty nine. Okay. Um. For 102k, he's only at 156. You can still bring him in. It's only one price rise. If you were to bring in like an elevator rookie anyway, they're 150. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Ah, that sucks. Because now his cash end's just so messed up. What is he? He's already at 20. He's not even in negatives anymore. That's tough. Uh, McDonald was meant to get his rest game, ended up having to play sub. So, um,. Against Brisbane, he probably does have to play. They can't... I don't think they're going to rest him. I think he's good on field. Like, he he does... Um, he's really good at bringing the ball to ground and uh, trying to... He, he's not physically at the point where he can beat his man consistently, but he, he knows what to do. He just hasn't got the body and skill set yet to do it, but he knows what to do. So I think they uh, just persist with him. I think he'll be all right. McComb um, just didn't really get involved much. I think the last couple of weeks he's had a goal or just had like a, a bit, you know, a fair few more touches. So yeah, just not as impactful. Um, he, he was. Mm, damn, this sucks. Why did I do that? I'm so stupid. I just got. Because my matchup I had Rioli and I was like, hmm, he's, he had the lowest break even. So I thought, okay, I win a matchup and. Yeah, I have the lowest break-even rookie, but it was just so stupid. Bringing a small forward. Wits looked like he was going to go big. Um, it slowed down in like the the third, picked up a little bit in the fourth. Uh, so yeah, 113, you take it. He beat Gorn, he beat Darcy this week, which is like two trade-ins. Like, shit, like, look, 50% of people made. Like, if you don't have the the wits Bruce Hayes, you probably brought in Gorn this week. So to have him outscore them is pretty good. Bruce 120, he's just he's a machine at making money, this guy. 46, he's gonna keep going up. Hayes with 55, you never field him. And the forward line was pretty good actually this week, apart from Cornelio. Uh Dunkley spent all of his time up forward, still average uh still managed one eighteen, which you take. Parker, 105, would like a little bit higher, but 105 to 110 is probably his average. Heaney, uh, I think he was like 2-4 or something, or was he 0-2 or something like that. He missed a couple of shots on goal. If he had one of them, he would have been fine. And also his CBAs have just dropped. Uh, don't He's not an inside mid anymore, I guess. Cornelio picked up a small injury. He did stay on field, uh, waiting to see what the injury report is. But he could be a trade out because his break even's like huge now. 146, yeah. He's done his job. Uh, there's actual, <clears throat> absolutely like nothing that you can say bad about him because he's done his job. You know, he's um, 200, what was he 297, 299, something like that. He's gone up 200k. He's provided some good scores. I think before this week, it was like at 93 or 94 average. Um, yeah, it, it, it's fine. Butters, on the other hand, this is so hit and miss. This week is going to be another bad score because it's Geelong. So people are going to be trading him out. If they, uh, they won't this week because it's the high score. People don't look at it. Um, 
then the, this was just a mess. Uh, Martin swapped roles with Hobbs. Dixon is just not a good player. He had to come in as a lead in for Kennedy, uh, but he can't play forward, really. He's just not that good a player. Then Rose is, was fine. You know, he made up for last week. Still not great. Uh, 43, maybe he resets it this week. But yeah, that's the team, like uh, in a summary. As for trades and stuff, I did have like ones locked in. I did want to go... Let's see if I can find how I did it. There's Dixon out because I don't want him anymore. He's just not good. Um, hmm. Uh, who do I want for him? I want to go Rioli forward. And I want to bring in uh, Clark. Clark looks fine. Um, I think West Coast should persist with him. I don't think he's like a a grade midfielder or anything like that, but he's he's fine. Um, for a rebuilding team, he's someone that you put games into. So who else? Thinking of trading McDonald. I don't know if I will. Did I? Have, there's no way I traded the Cogs. Just give me a second. I have to like work out what the trades were. I did. All right. So I have got McDonald out. Um, just to kind of like share my thoughts on what I'm doing like what I'm planning to do. Uh, I'd like Brayshaw in, but next week, what, we're in 10? End of next week, end of round 11, is the next, like, um, lot of DPP allotments. So there's one guy that he's... I'm pretty sure, like, all the experts and stuff on the matter have uh, worked out. He's, he's very, very likely to get it, and that's Bont. Uh, Baz uh, might get it, but it's it's Bont that I want. He's only missed the ton once this year, and it was in a like a game where he I think he was just hurt the whole game. So let's have a look at his scoring. Yeah, uh, the only game was Adelaide, and I think he was hurt in the Adelaide game. That's why um, he ended up taking a week off here. So one hundred and five, one hundred and five. Yeah, if you. I really want to make room for him. Martin, I don't think he can trade this week. Eight, uh, 86, yeah, you can definitely trade him this week. That's pretty high, especially now that he's lost his role. If he kept his role, then I'd say keep him, but... Mm. Cogs is a trade option. I, I just want to see the injury report first. Uh, if he's fit, I might keep him a week and then trade him to Bont. Uh, I actually, I don't know who I want to trade. Because mm. I'd also like a defender. Uh, let's see. I'm actually kind of stuck here. I don't know. So we'll good, Dacos out. Could bring Bont in a week early. I don't know how smart that is. So then I'll go Brayshaw. Who, uh, Brayshaw might not be a top 8 mid, but... Uh, I'm just bringing in someone I like to watch. And then say Dale. I can't afford Dale. Yeah. So if we go to players looking forward and show me the actual list. Sinclair's not terrible. I think he might be on the borderline of top six. Maybe he might finish seven. But I mean, 107 average, three round average isn't great. But now there's no steal. Um, speaking of, if you have Steele, he's out six weeks, so you probably do have to trade him, and then bring him back if you want at the end. <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is killing him. Without those, he's actually doing fine. Probably at like a 110 or 111 average. Uh, hmm, Adelaide North, that's pretty good. Adelaide North, Brisbane, Essendon. Essendon's good, Brisbane not so much. Sydney's not great. Carlton's all right for a defender. Freo's not good. Dogs are <clears throat> okay. Not not good for mids, but fine for defenders. I think Sinclair's actually the option in defense, honestly. Who is there anyone I'm missing? Rioli's like your budget, super, super budget option to the point where I think you just don't bother. Uh, Luke Ryan is, yeah, he's dead. Uh, I wouldn't bother with him. Caleb Daniel, never again. Perryman, nah, Angus, Angus has had a pretty, like, he's had a couple of good games, but not enough to actually, like, warrant picking him, 
Stephen May's interesting because he's actually like, in terms of like on field, like not counting super coach, he's probably one of the better defenders in the league. Lloyd, is, uh, maybe Lloyd can turn it around. It only had a 98 this week. Missed the ton. Uh, this is probably going to go forever, so I'll probably just make trades off screen. I don't know what I'm going to do. So there's no rookies here. Maybe I'll just take Buku. Um, this is like the only rookie available in defense, something like that. I'm going to have a look. Um, I'm pretty sure he is. Let's put that down to like a rookie price. Yeah, all right, so you can't. Uh, Cleary, who actually looks all right, but he might not keep his spot. Um, no, apparently he's just really young, so I don't know if he keeps his spot. Buku is, like, super reliant on goals, meaning you cannot field him. Unless you want the Rioli part two, you can't field him. Uh, Kemp, Kemp should get more games now that Zach Williams out. Uh, different position, but, you know, it's a defender. You need a defender in. Actually, Kemp's interesting. Uh, next week, it could be Cleary and Kemp as your uh, defensive options. Sucks that neither of them have mid status. That would be a bit better. Um, and Buku should get forward if there's a third round of DPP. I don't think there is. Um, yeah, I think it's Bagoa Nguyen. Yeah, something like that. He's just not very good. Kyron Hayden plays for the worst team, so yeah, there's just not many options here. Say so like you get Buku in, yeah, it gives me 500, 300 in the bank. Get Bont soon. Uh, yeah, we'll just go with that for on screen. I'll probably change that because I don't. I'm not sure if I like that. But yeah, uh, let me know how your week went. Surely it's better than mine. Uh, there's no way so many people had Rioli on field. Yeah, uh, until next week, tasty out.